the Horticulture Extension Agent for Alamance County. Uh, this is the first of our Think Green Thursdays classes for 2018. There's a schedule over there on the table. We'll get one of those before we leave. Lots of classes of different topics for this year. So we're starting off, though, with grapevine pruning. So we've got Andy Zeman from Benjamin Vineyards here. He's got a big vineyard. He'll tell you about that a little bit, and he'll explain the ins and outs of grapevine pruning. Okay, again. Right. Thanks, Mark. Um, all right, welcome, everybody. Uh, Mark said we're, we're Benjamin Vineyards. My wife and I planted the vineyard, uh, just adding it up, uh, almost 17 years ago. So we've got some pretty old vines. We've got over 2,000 muscadine vines. Uh, we prune them all by hand. <coughs> so uh, I don't do it all by myself. We usually we hire some help to, to help us prune. And we have about Let's see, I think we're up to 16 different varieties. So if you're looking to plant different varieties and see the differences in the size and the color and the flavor, come by uh, this fall and uh, we open for Pick Your Own Labor Day. That's one of our uh, uh, our big uh, sources of income is Pick Your Own Muscadine Grapes. And we get 100 people out on a weekend picking grapes. So, uh, Last year we actually ran out of the Pick Your Own Grapes. It was a, it was a bad year for grapes because of the, the cold weather and we actually got completely picked out. Um, we did have a winery at one time. We closed it two years ago and now we just grow grapes and uh, we sell grapes to other wineries and microbrews buy a lot of grapes. And we also package them and ship them all over the United States. We've, uh, we ship them in five gallon pails, we freeze them, and we found that uh, the UPS shipment is still frozen by the time it gets to the destination. So we get, we ship to California, Canada, and Florida. So, and we still have some left, so if you've got a taste for some muscadine jelly or want to make some uh, homemade wine, we still have some frozen away if you're interested in. We also make jams and jellies and muscadine juice that we sell in wine bottles, so it's non-alcoholic muscadine wine. All right, pruning. This is a time of year for pruning, uh, when the vines are dormant. Uh, you prune for one reason, uh, is mainly to produce fruit. The muscadines are growing wild in the, in the woods. They've gone up a tree somewhere. They've got all kinds of growth. But they produce very little fruit. And if it is productive, they're very small. So the whole object of pruning is to cut all that growth off and let the energy of the vine going into producing fruit instead of uh, leaves and branches and so on. So that's, that's the trick, to keep that vine pruned way back, and that stimulates fruit production. What you do in the wintertime as well is you look for damage. Um, a lot of times you'll get some damage uh, either from frost or from just the weight of the vine, and so you want to go through and cull all that out. And you also want to uh, train the vine. A lot of times the vine will go wild, and it'll, it'll, sh it'll send out what we call bull canes, a cane about as thick as your thumb, and it just travels all the way down the, the vineyard and tries to grow up a tree. You want to get all those bull canes out too, because they're not productive. Um, this is our, our uh, commercial muscadine planting. Um, our vines, are, our wires are about five and a half feet tall, and our vines are 20 feet between vine, and then the rows, I didn't show the rows, our rows um, are normally 10 feet apart in the row, so if you're planting a new vineyard, again, you want 10 foot apart in your rows and you put your vines 20 feet apart in the row. Um, just some details. You get a lot of questions on how to hang that vine from your wire. Do not wrap that vine around the wire because what's gonna happen oh, five or six years from now, that arm is gonna be about as big as my arm and that wire is going to be embedded right inside of that wire and that's going to kill that arm. So you want to hang it from the wire, not wrap it around the wire. That's important. And uh, we use these, uh, they're called uh, vine ties. It's a continuous chain and you can cut them to any length you want and hook them together and hang that vine from the wire. And we get them from a, a it's called Orchard Valley Supply. You can get them online. I think some of the uh, um, the local shops can also order them for you. It comes in, I think, a thousand foot roll, so you can you can get a lot of these. But don't don't use um, like twist ties. The twist ties 
that wire will eventually dig into the vine and it'll kill that vine right where that wire tie is. So don't use the little skinny wire tie, that's not good. Use something wide that'll support the vine but not cut into it. And the picture that in there, um, I don't agree with it 100%. I like to plant my vine next to a post, not in between the posts. So what's gonna happen, again, five or six years down the line, uh, that vine's going to start putting out maybe 100 pounds of grapes, and that wire is going to dip down like a telephone wire from that weight. So I put the vine next to the post to give it some support. And to tie it to the post, uh, again, use something that's not going to dig into that uh, vine. Um, got some old belting material laying around. You can put a, a belt around it, or you can use two or three of these together to tie that to the post. As far as materials, important thing is a good pair of sturdy gloves. I uh, use heavy leather because one time I'm pruning and talking and I went like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had a good heavy leather glove and I didn't cut the tip of my finger off like a colleague of mine did. So the, the, not only to keep your hands warm, but to protect them while you're cutting. Pruners. You can pay anywhere from $5 to $150 for a set of pruners. Um, these are, I think, $8 at Lowe's, and these are $15 at um, Southern States. There's a difference in them. <clears throat> these are basically a throwaway. These, a little bit more expensive, but if you notice, they've got a little adjustment on here. Once you use these pruners for a long time, they start getting loose and so you can tighten them with this adjuster and it's got a little locking mechanism to keep those uh, shears going tight against each other. And that little screw right there, that means it's a replaceable blade. So if you're going along and you happen to cut into a nail or a wire, you can buy a new blade for this and just replace the blade. But this doesn't have any of those features. They're basically throwaway at the end of the year. But if you only got one vine, these are fine. If you've got 2,000, <laughs> if you're going to do a lot of pruning, get one of these. It's a, uh, it's a hone. It's got a little piece of tungsten carbide on the end. And every now and then when you're pruning, you use it. And you keep that blade razor sharp so that when you're cutting, you're making a nice clean cut and not leaving a lot of burrs. Now these, I, I put a little watch fob on there because I always drop it in the grass and lose it. So let's keep an eye on it. Where can you get that? Um, you can get these at Lowe's. <coughs> it should be in the same section as the, uh, the pruners. And finally, um, if you don't have a lot of hand strength, you can get a double set of pruners. And I use this when, I, when my hand starts getting cramps, I use the double ones. Now this one, I've never seen these with replaceable um, uh, blades, so you got to keep them pretty sharp. Any questions so far? The best thing about these, you can ask a lot of questions as we go along. Okay. All right, here's our muscadine vine. Does this look like yours? <laughs> um, this actually is probably only a three-year vine. The first year, you want to establish a main trunk. Second year, you let it grow out along your wires. In your third year, uh, you, uh, so of course, is a four-year vine. In the third year, you start getting side growth, and then the fourth year, that side growth starts putting out shoots. And if you keep it fertilized well, these shoots will come down almost to the ground. Um, if your shoots are only a foot long, you're not fertilizing it enough. You want you want to get good growth during its young years. Um, Ison's Nursery recommends one pound of 10, 10, 10 the first year. Spread it in a circle around the roots, about a two foot circle. Uh, the second year, two pounds. Do them a month apart. So do the first pound in March, the second pound in April. And for three year and older vines, you use three pounds of 10, 10, 10. One pound in March, one pound in April, and one pound in May. You want, to, you want to spread it out. Don't put it all down at once or you could burn the roots. So the, again, back to the purpose of pruning is to stimulate growth. What we want to do is, 
do you remember anything from this seminar at all? This year's grapes come from last year's growth. So we're going to prune last year's growth down to two buds, and those two buds will produce the fruit for this summer. So if you look at your vine, you'll see, oh, let me draw something. Usually right at the base there's a bud, that's called a renewal bud. And then if you go down the vine, you'll have a series of buds on that vine. Now what we want to do is we want to trim that shoot to where there's two buds in addition to that renewal bud. Now, what a renewal bud does is, if we have a heavy frost like we did last year, um, I had one variety called Scarlet, which is a good um, fresh eating grape. It froze these two buds and they didn't produce, but this renewal bud put out new growth. Didn't have any grapes on it, but it produced a lot of growth. So I'll have uh, grapes this year, hopefully. But, uh, so you want to prune all these all of last year's growth to two buds. What's going to happen is next summer, these two buds will produce new shoots. And those will have your, your great clusters on them. Are you with me so far? That's the important thing. This year's, this summer's grapes come from last year's um, wood. Uh, you want to cut off any what we call uh, water sprouts, anything that comes up from the uh, base during the year. You want to cut those completely off, and that's one of the problems you'll have with an older vine. Is you'll see a lot of shoots coming up from the base and they go up and they weave their way through the vine. You want to get rid of those, get those out of the vine. <coughs> Questions so far? I do. Yeah. Why would you want to take those shoots on the trunk off when they start growing? Because you might lose sugar. <coughs> Yeah, they'll they'll bleed. Okay. So if you take them off during during the, uh, the growing season, you, I'd say after the Fourth of July you can take them off. But in the spring, when there's a lot of sap growing up in the vine, you don't want to do too much cutting. Um, exceptions. This is a uh, this is what we call commercial um, planting. Uh, a lot of the, the vines that I've gone out and looked at, they're planted behind the house on a platform. You might have a platform with four posts. So in this case, you'll have four of these shoots, and I'm trying to think in three dimensions, but the, you know, the third one will come out this way, and the fourth one will come out. So you want to run these to each corner of the post. So your vine will be in the center, and out at the corner, you'll have four posts. <clears throat> so that your vine can go out to the corners. I, I've seen a lot of those, and I, I, they look really pretty. And I don't know how you prune those. Because unless you get up on a ladder and crawl across the top, they're going to be hard to get at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an exception, is if you've got it on a platform, you can run as many as four <coughs> um, called fruiting arms, one to each corner. Um, do not get questions about, well, can I run a second arm under the first? The answer is no, do not do that. Um, because remember, if you're fertilizing this properly, those upper shoots are coming almost to the ground, and they're going to cover that lower <coughs> arm, and it's not going to produce any fruit. And you could get some um, mold growing underneath there. So don't double up under the wire. You can double up sideways 
Uh, a lot of our plantings at Benjamin are, are on what's called a double curtain system. I think there's a picture of that. Yeah, there's a picture of a double a double wire system where your your two wires are side by side. That's a way to get more uh, fruit out of your vine. Called a double wire system, and um, some of our vines are actually putting in a triple wire system to kind of spread that canopy out um, so we can get more sun penetration on the leaves. Questions? You're a good group so far. I must be doing a good job. Yes. I'm just wondering, I've been up some time before, and I don't know if Reese is down there. Is it, was, was there anything that you might have done to cut back on the damage to the farm? No. Nah, you know, we don't, we don't really have like a, a spray system where we can spray water on. It's uh, one of those things you just keep your fingers <laughs> I think if anything, I've started um, leaving longer shoots as I prune. Sometimes I'll leave three buds. So where that shoot is, I'll, I'll leave a, a much longer one so you know, I can let these ones out at the end die and I'll still get some fruit coming out. So um, just as a guide, when we go out and look, at a minimum, you know, grab that with your hand and clip. So you've got maybe four inches of shoot Sometimes they, uh, if you're not careful and cut them too close to the main part, they'll, those ends will freeze and they won't produce fruit for next year. Your material mentions three buds per fruit. Right, we've got a, 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 a renewal bud and then you've got two fruiting buds. That's your three. Uh, You've got a very old vine that hasn't been uh, you know, pruned in years and years. What you're going to find is your one-year-old wood, which you're going to cut to three buds, is way, way out at the end. And really, to control that vine, you want to cut a lot of that growth back to get it back to your main trunk. And uh, you may cut off three, four, five years worth of growth. Don't worry. When that happens, you'll skip a year because uh, you won't have any of those uh, one-year growth spurs to produce fruit. But that vine will produce some new growth this year, and when you prune it the following year, then you'll get grapes. So you'll skip a year when you do a heavy pruning. Yes? I have um, a vine set up like you do there, except I did do what you said don't do. I have one six feet off the ground, then I have one three feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. It's been there for years. Oh, I say years, maybe seven or eight years. Okay. Would I be smart just to do away with that lower vine? Uh, are you getting any fruit off of it? I am, but it, it ends up, like you said, draping onto the ground. Um, but I'm getting some fruit off of it. If, if you cut those off, you'll find that you'll get more fruit and larger fruit off that. It would actually be easier for me to manage it and see it. If I, like you said, it's just a huge canopy. You have to sort of look through it to get all the musket out. Yeah. But it won't hurt it for me to cut those off. No. Is there, is there room to go sideways? I mean, you could maybe. He's got, he's got two rows, okay. three in each of these two rows, and they are they're about eight or ten feet apart. But you can barely walk in between them because yeah. they're they're so bushy. Yeah. And then we've got another section that he's got three in. And uh, those those are, are not quite as bad as the first ones. Five feet apart is is really close. You're almost better off taking out every other vine. <clears throat> I know you don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, take out every other vine and let the other ones fill in around it. <clears throat> and, uh, cut those yeah, I get a tremendous fruit. amount of uh, fruit off it. Yeah, yeah. But they just look at them. I've got pictures of them. They look like. 
Well, we've been out to, uh, it's called the mother vine, if anybody's ever heard of the mother vine. It's, it's a scuppernong that's growing out on Roanoke Island, and it's been in continuous cultivation for over 400 years, going back to colonial times. And that vine, I would say, is a good 100 feet long by maybe as wide as this room. It's huge. And and they still get fruit off of it. They keep it pruned back pretty well. And uh, the power company almost killed it a few years back. They uh, it's decided to go up a telephone pole and they sprayed it with uh, either Roundup or Paraquat or something like that. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they were able to cut it back very quickly before that poison could get down in the root system and they were able to save the vine. But I found some pictures going back around the turn of the century that show pictures of it. And uh, it was huge back then and that's only 100 years ago. But uh, yeah, they, they, they'll they continue to grow as much as you let them, but if you want to get a lot of fruit in good quality, then I'd say try and thin it back the best you can. Yes? Speaking of old grapevines, um, what do you do if you have Does it have any side branches it, at all? It does. It just kind of goes sideways, and yeah. I want to get it up off the Yeah, well, put, a, put a post next to it and just try and train those, you know, get them up off the ground and bend them up and trying to get them up on that wire about chest high. Okay. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> yes? Um, I've got a problem with deer. About the time oh, they yeah. start getting right, <laughs> the deer come and get them, and yeah. so um, it's we're just buying netting and wrapping around. I only have one vine, but it's, you know, pretty big. Just wrapping around that, right, before, you know, like when they're about halfway right, would that be the best thing to do? Um, probably you can get deer netting that's seven foot high and uh, just get some, um, some T posts and put four T posts and put the netting up around. Don't wrap it in the vine because okay. the, the tendrils will go through that deer netting and get it all tied up. But if you just make a little fence around it with that seven foot tall deer netting, um, that'll keep them out. We just, Where do you get the deer netting? Um, I've seen that tractor supply. Tractor supply. Yeah. We, just, we just got a grant. I'm gonna put a plug in for RAFI. Has anybody heard of RAFI? Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the Rural Advancement Finance Initiative. It's, it's the distributing out a lot of the old tobacco money. And we got a RAFI grant to deer proof our vineyard. So we've got seven foot high deer netting around 10 acres. So it's, we did have one deer get in, and I saw how he got in. It, he, he must have gotten scared and ran across the road. And he got tangled up near the top of it and tore it and got inside. And I was able to uh, drive around with my golf cart and kind of herd him toward the front gate to get him out. <laughs> So they'll get in if they're, you know, something's chasing them. But other than that, they're they're pretty lazy. They won't try and jump it normally. Yes. One last question. Uh, my son just bought a house next to me. And it had uh, vine, muscadine vines there for years. It was the old style trellis where it's built. You like you have six posts and then you have a frame up above. Yeah. Everything's on top. Yeah. And it's so big and such a mess up there. Yeah. Would it be better to cut it off at the ground and let it come out, or just take it all out and start over with new vines? Um, in that case, I'd, I'd cut a, the main trunk off about head high, and it'll start producing new side shoots, and then you can run those down. So just get rid of all that mess up above, yeah. and just leave that one big, cut it off with the chainsaw. I mean, it's, it's probably eight inches around at the bottom. Yeah, and if you've, you've got some, you'll have some, some big side shoots, you know, leave maybe a foot. Uh -huh. you know, cut it off so it looks something like that. And then these will put out new growth that you can train whatever. Then train it back on. maybe two like you do on your six foot. Yeah. Or if two. you want to put your trellis back, just run four, one to each corner post. Okay. All right, thank you. I've got a question about to follow up with him about it's very hard for him. Mm -hmm. is, is there any difference in when you prune an old wood like that to cut it straight or to cut it sort of at an angle? Does it make any difference? I've not noticed a difference. Okay. I, I've got some vines where I took a chainsaw and cut it off a foot from the ground just straight across and it's, it's come right back. Once it, once it has that root system developed, it, they'll, they'll keep coming back. They're, they're hard to kill. I believe it was Mark. 
Mark, right? Mm -hmm. You came out to my place in Southern Alabama County about three years ago. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great vine my brother planted, has two vines, and he got uh, where he couldn't take care of it, and they just, just like y'all talked about. And after about three, four days, and a small tractor and pulling stuff out of it, and, and, and probably two or three cups of chainsaw, and post and trellis it like that, it's like you wouldn't think it's the same vine. Mm -hmm. Like this lady up there said, you know, there's places down near the ground we cut off with a saw. Mm -hmm. Got a new got a new vine coming up. Yeah. Got a train going. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I had the most grapes I was telling her two years ago I ever had. Or almost got. Come September, come late August, I never seen them. I never seen no deer tracks. I thought somebody was coming and getting them, but they were hanging up for a lot. They are in California. I've never seen so many grapes. Yeah, if you'll get a possum or a uh, raccoon will get up in there and just chow down on those grapes all night long if you're not careful. But we were at the point about maybe just just flattening it out and starting with new vines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll, they'll come back. If they've, if they've got good flavor and, and, and they're producing well, save them. One's Carlos, and I don't remember what the other one is. Okay. Um, Good point on varieties. Muscadines are gender specific. There are male and female. Um, the Isons Nursery website has got a listing of all their varieties as to which ones are male and which ones are female. Make sure you have at least one of each planted within 50 feet of each other. Um, I, I had a lot of people say, you know, we used to have two vines, one of them died and now I don't have any grapes. Well, what happened is the pollinator died and the one that's left is a female and it's not producing without any uh, local pollinator. So make sure you've got a pollinator mixed in with your grapes and that will help them produce more as well. Once you prune an older vine back mm -hmm. that much, you know, to head height, or, you know, as you mentioned, yeah. how long after that before it starts to produce again? Uh, you'll get some grapes the second year and you'll probably get a full crop the third year. Does this practice carry over in all grapevines? All types of grapevines? Uh, no, good point. I'll go into some other. Anybody have like Concord or, yeah, there we go. Um, the muscadines we train on a high wire because they like to spread out and down. If you've got a Concord or, a, or some of the other ones, Niagara maybe. This wire, first wire here, is maybe belt high, I don't know, 30 inches. And you want your main shoot to come off down here. Maybe that's why they're here short. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you'll have the same, you'll have your, your fruiting spurs, again, down here about belt high. And your trellis will have uh, at least three more wires going all the way up to about six feet. I'm going to draw my post back in here. And what's going to happen, the, those, like the conqueror, they like growing up. So they'll grow up and you'll tie them off like this. And this is how most wine grapes are grown as well. If you could come to a, a vineyard with wine grapes, they train these things so nice it almost looks like a comb where all those vines are going straight up. They've tied, tied them off. So this would be like a Concord or a, or a Niagara. Your main trunk is about waist high and then all your shoots are going up instead of out and down like a, uh, like a muscadine. But you still trim them down to like a third or fourth body? Yes. If, if you want to come out to the vineyard, um, we actually moved into the winery. We converted it to our house. So I'm out there pretty much every day. Just call ahead of time. And we've got, so we still have some of our old wine grapes planted. And you'll see how they're pruned like this. And then, of course, we've got the, the 2,000 muscadine grapes, which uh, I may put you to work if you come out and visit. <laughs>
If we're done with questions, we can go up. Oh, yeah. That one, you don't want any growth under that that arm. No. With, with the bunch type break. You want everything above it. Correct. Would you prune throughout the year to keep it clean underneath it, or would you let that growth stay there? Um, the as long as it's not interfering with the, uh, the, the cultivation of the grape, as long as you're getting sunlight in there. Usually what this, this wire is called your fruiting wire and your, your bunches of grapes will be supported off that fruiting wire. Again, you see some pictures of some European vineyards. They're just perfect. They've got these spaced all like six inches apart and they've got one beautiful bunch of grapes hanging right from that fruiting. And then these other wires are just to hold the foliage up so they get the sunlight to give energy to the grapes. Would you say that any growth may come up under that? Every, every six or eight inches apart, it does. That's what needs yeah, to be you'll get a lot of water sprouts coming okay. out. Those need to be cut off. Right. Is the fermentation the same? The um, the varieties. I, I tell you, you don't prune them or you don't fertilize them as much as muscadines because muscadines. The vine is so big and so productive. Um, this vine, you know, if you get maybe 20 pounds of grapes, you're doing good. So I say cut your fertilizing in half. So maybe a half a pound the first year, a pound the second year, and maybe a pound and a half the third year. Which you're always recommending a balance for what like one ten ten ten. Yes. Do we'll do some pruning, and afterwards we can come back if you have any other questions. Now, if you don't get these close to the uh, trunk and you leave a couple buds, it's just going to put out more shoots next year and you don't want that. You want these shoots that you're saving to grow. Not these down here. I need, so we're just, I need to look at your mic real quick. We're just going to get all these out of here. Yep, looks like this one is trying to save. Completely off, right? Make sure you don't cut one off that we're trying to keep. We were trying to decide which one of those we were going to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> Looks like it made up its own mind. Yeah, yeah, they'll do that. Take the one that you that you wanted and say, no. So Real quick, okay, I need to look at your mic. Oh, I, I, I took it off and put it back in. Oh, I need it. Uh, I need it. Sorry about that. I didn't know we were going to continue to Christine, film. can you go get uh, his microphone, please? On the, uh -oh. on the table Thank where you. my coat was. Sorry about that. That's all right. So later this summer we may take this one off and this one off, but uh, it's like we'll probably you know, just take the two stronger ones and let them trail down. But you want a clean trunk and you don't want too much mulch just in case we get uh, some damage under the mulch. Tear out it. What should you be mulching with? Um, Bald cypress needles, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that is in bad mulch. Um, you don't want to use sawdust. Anything that will grow a lot of mold, you don't want to put down there. So sawdust is not good. Uh, leaf mulch, if it gets moldy, that is not good either. So, yeah, something, uh, cedar works well. Just... Pond straw? Uh, pine straw works well. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that won't have mold. Alright. Okay. Alright, that one's ready for next year. <coughs> Hopefully we'll get <laughs> get some good growth. Alright, our second one's over here and this is the one that we've been working on. healthy vine uh, getting the right amount of fertilizer these you know looks like they've been cut back a little bit but they're probably almost to the ground if they're if they go all the way to the ground what's going to happen is they'll root 
and that's one of the ways you can propagate them. If you've got a big vine and it goes down and touches the ground, um, you can do it a number of different ways. You can just get a, a brick or something and set it on there, and it'll actually put out roots where that brick is, and then you can clip it off and replant it. So that's a good way to propagate these. Um, during the summer, what we do at Benjamin is we air root them, because we'll take a... Uh, a healthy vine and we'll tie a bag of peat moss around that vine and one of these buds will produce a ball of roots inside that peat moss and then we'll cut it off and replant it. So you can air root and uh, which is just a way of, of making it think that it's touching the ground by putting the ground in a, in a, in a ziplock bag around the, uh, around the vine. So alright, so what we'll do is we'll clear out. This vine was hedged in the summer. We hedged this vine. Yeah, this summer. That's why it's not up, down to the ground because it's warm. So if, if you look at a fruiting spur, you can see. Get real close. This is the the shoot we left last year. It had two buds plus a renewal bud, and all three of them sprouted. So our renewal bud put out a shoot. This bud put out a shoot and this bud put out a shoot. So this is a nice healthy vine. All, all three produced. So here's a bud, here's a bud, and we're not going to count the base one. So we're going to put that off right there. There's your renewal bud at the base. One, two. And this one, same thing. A renewal bud's at the base. One, two. And when you cut them, Leave about an inch of wood past the bud. That way, if we do get a cold snap, you know, it won't freeze all the way down and kill that bud. So clip it off almost to the next bud. Some of these, I'm just going to kind of hack them to get them out of the way so you can see what a, a finished one looks like. a good example. Okay, here's last year's. It produced one shoot. One, two, and we'll cut. This one, the renewal bud tried to put out a shoot and it kind of withered away, but still we had. So this was last year's. This was from the year before, the year before, the year before. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, five years of growth on this. Now you got a real old vine, this thing will start looking like a deer antler. It'll, it'll have multiple years of uh, cuttings and every now and then you just have to whack it off back to the base and it'll start all over again. Alright, can I get that? So see I'm doing about, about the width of my hand. <laughs> if you were to have a plant that had a lot of those old ones that had to be cut right, you'd recommend just taking some of them one year or you'll cut all of them. See, they're, these, well, these you want to keep them spaced out. Um, you can see here there's evidence of, of older ones. They used to be only six inches apart, and when they started growing into each other, I took the loppers and whacked off the whole fruiting spur, so now they're about eight inches apart. And maybe in a couple more years, I'll take this one completely out and have these two, which are about a foot apart. So as that vine grows and these fruiting spurs start arguing with each other you just have to go and take every other one out and let you know let that vine breathe a little bit. Basically what you plan is you can't cut too much. No. <laughs> if you don't cut enough you won't get you'll get a lot of growth but not a lot of grapes. Again, here's the here's the shoot I left last year. It produced like I did here you got nine vines, so you better do one vine per year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do every other one to give it room to grow. Get this clutter out of the way. Let's see what I'm doing here. That's 
what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm all back on my every day. <laughs> Now, we've got some here, like, really little scrawny stuff. Put that all the way back to the renewal bud because that's really not going to produce any fruit. So you can cut these back just to that one renewal bud. Maybe we'll get some more growth out of it. Can I see what I'm doing there here? About every six to eight inches you're leaving. Yes, yeah. so I say this is a young vine. Uh, I say in a couple years I may tick this one out just to open up. I realize I've been doing mine wrong, but I've been cutting mine all the way back to that main growth. All the way back. Oh. <laughs> you get. Grapes? I'm, not, I'm gonna try this. But I'm saying, what did, why, where am I getting it from? Right off of the face? You could be, yeah, you could be getting the uh, renewal. Maybe it's just it's it's really wanting to produce fruit. So it's you know usually your renewal buds don't produce fruit, but in this case, it sounds like that's what's happening. The renewal buds are producing fruit. Now, if you really if you really have a good green thumb, you can take like pencil size cuttings and if you've got like a greenhouse or a nice warm spot you can dip these in root tone and put them in a damp peat moss and you can get new sprouts off these cuttings as well so that's another way to propagate them is with hardwood cuttings they're not as effective as with the uh, um, the the rooting during the summer with the uh, air rooting uh, maybe one or two out of ten will actually take, and it, 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 it depends on the varieties. The uh, the male um, pollinators seem to root better than the female for some reason. But uh, even if you have to buy them, um, you know, a new grapevine you can order them from Ison's about ten dollars, and for a vine that's going to live for 25 years and produce, you know, a thousand pounds of fruit during that time, it's a really a, a good investment. <clears throat> Our vineyard, we've got uh, six acres now planted, and last year was a bad year. We picked about 45,000 pounds of grapes. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. a lot of grapes. <laughs> You just kind of eyeball them and <laughs> start cutting. When is it too late to prune the grapes down? If they've sprouted and they've got you know a couple inches of green growth on them, I wouldn't prune them after that. And that'll usually happen. You know, muscat eyes are really they don't like the cold and. They don't start sprouting in earnest until the end of April, maybe May, so you can be I'm pruning. <laughs> I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got plenty of time. I think we've done ours, I think, the second week of March. You can do it too early. We start early because we just have so many that we have to do. And unfortunately, the negative of that is pruning stimulates growth. So now if we get a warm spell in the middle of February, these buds will start swelling and then we get a cold snap, it could kill the buds. So early pruning could stunt the growth. <laughs> if you just have one vine, you know, wait until the weather's nice and do it you know, <clears throat> end of March sometime. As far as uh, doing the air rooting, I found the best week to do air rooting is the week of the 4th of July. You've got really nice vigorous growth, you've got nice canes coming out and you can tie those bags of peat moss on there to do air rooting. Uh, another trick, I uh, learned this from uh, uh, Hinnett Vineyards, they take a uh, one of these, like a Dasani water bottle, and cut the bottom off of it and pull that vine through the neck of that bottle so that it forms a cup and then they put peat moss in that cup. 
and it'll form a little ball of roots inside that, that uh, Dasani bottle. <laughs> Put some more on this side so you can see.